it was just good all the way through. And we've been praying. If you felt a little touch from the Lord, maybe it's our prayers. Because we pray for everybody we can think of. Yeah. And uh, we love you this morning. We want to encourage you to worship God. Amen. Yeah. You know how you worship God? You know how to worship God? Amen. You just let go and let the Holy Spirit lead, guide, and direct you. And when you go home and you do that, you'll say, I've been at church. Now, you can go to church and never be at, never get church. You know what I mean? You can just go to church and sit there and go home and say, well, I fulfill my duty. I went to church today. But I like to be at church. Don't you? I like to be in church. I like to be church. Amen? So wake up now. And everybody stand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I want you to do a couple of things. I want you to help Jeffrey sing. Will you do that when he sings the next song? I'm going to get down there and I'm going to help you. So we're going to help you sing. I want you to say this with me if you do. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Amen. I'm expecting something today from God. I'm expecting something today from God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you really mean it? Amen. Amen. Brother Jeff. Brother Frank. Yes. I saw him talk to Sister Barbara Delahaye outside. She said tell everybody in the church that she loves them and how love them and pray for her. Who? Sister Barbara Delahaye. Oh, okay. Yes. Sister Barbara. Praise the Lord. She's outside and outside. We're broadcasting outside also. We've got people outside that's sickly and, and don't come in here. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. We'll do what everybody knows. Yeah. Yeah. Page 230, Amazing Grace. So Amen. Wow.
And I said, have you ever, I knew the answer, but I said, have you ever preached camp meeting? And he said, no, I can't say I had. He's a, he's a kind, he's a gentleman. He's not like I, he's a gentleman. He's a kind gentleman. And uh, so I said, we can do it in the morning. So he preached and did a good job. Second sermon right here behind this pulpit, I think. Was in this building, we was in the old building, okay? Behind that pulpit down there. And uh, I've loved him ever since. He's done a great job. He worked at uh, a church and uh, as a youth minister, and he did a great job in that church. He's left that church, so uh, he's open to preach some. We brought him to preach for us this morning. Uh, Brother Andrew Shower. Did I say that right? Shower? Okay. I said it right the second time. I didn't say it right the first time. So that's right. But uh, so in a few minutes, he's going to be coming, and Deidre's coming down to sing a special for us. Pray for the service. Amen. Be part of the service today. Amen. That's how you can enjoy it. Just be part of it. song in the song book, not sing it, but get us all to sing it, but I won't do that this morning, uh, but I will say this, it's how great thou art, yeah. that's my favorite song in the song book, in this song book, and uh, God's a great God, Amen. this morning in the Sunday school class, we talked to pre-teens, I guess that's what you call it, they're not hard to teens, and they're getting close, uh, we talked about the Holy Spirit, we've been teaching that about six times now. We finished today and we taught out of the fourth chapter of St. John's Gospel. First John, not St. John. First John's Gospel. And we talked about the Spirit. God's Holy Spirit. And how you 
detect God's spirit from the spirit of error. And that's the scripture where it says try the spirit. See whether they be of God or not. Then it explains to you what God's spirit is. And you know what? I think I'm going to start reading that scripture every, right before every service. You know, because there's many spirits entered into the world, the Bible says. But they're not all of God. Yeah. The sweet Holy Spirit will only bring joy and happiness, healing and forgiveness. Wow, ain't that something? Yeah. Nothing but good will the Holy Spirit bring. Ain't that wonderful? <laughs> Andrew, I want you to welcome Andrew as he comes. Andrew Shower. Uh, he's got a wonderful family there. Honor this God's man as he comes to pray the Lord. scared to death and we gave my family to sing and he gets you that night and he's like hey you can preach for me tomorrow morning what do you say <laughs> sure 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 I'll never forget we're at the Phoenix Creek campground and I am there by our fire and I am absolutely scared to death I don't know what I'm going to do it's one of those times you just pray Lord give me something I gotta have something I don't know what to say I don't know what to do, but I thank the Lord for the opportunity he gave me then. I thank the Lord that Brother Frank has still continued to be my friend. Yeah. And is still used me. We're going to turn to 1 John chapter 4. Wow. Right. <laughs> do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. 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 I know he's been far better to me than I have been to serve. He has been so good to me. This morning, I have a very simple thought. Me and Brother Frank are supposed to be sharing the pulpit this morning. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> First John chapter 4. We're going to read verse, start with verse 7. First John chapter 4 and verse 7. The Bible says this. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Thank you. And this was manifest, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loves his brother also. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you, and I thank you for everything you've done. Lord, I thank you.
for loving us so much. So undeserving, Lord, but you loved us. And I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for this past, Lord, Brother Frank, and the blessing that he's been to so many. Lord, I just ask that you continue to touch him and his ministry. Lord, you touch this church here. Lord, I just ask that you be with him. Lord, I just ask for a few moments, Lord, to just be with us. You'll meet with us. You'll touch us. If there's anybody here that's never accepted you as their personal Savior, that today would be the day where they came to know you and the three part of sin. Lord, for someone here this morning that's straight away, Lord, I just ask that you just bring them back in, Lord, ever close to your side. Lord, let them see the need to be ever so close to you. Yeah. I love you and thank you for everything you've done. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Amen. This morning I have for you a very, very, very simple thought, a very, <coughs> a very simple sermon. But you know, God, he has been so good to me. He has been, been so good to me in my life, and he has blessed me beyond measure. I mean, to think about all that he's done is just absolutely, <coughs> it's absolutely amazing. And, 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 I'm, and I realize it, and I know that I am undeserving. I don't deserve his love. I don't deserve his grace. I don't deserve his mercy. But I'm so thankful that he poured it out upon me in my life. So this morning, if you don't hear another word I say, I want you to, to hear this. If you don't listen to another part of the sermon, I want you to know this. That Andrew Shira loves the Lord with Amen. all his heart. I love the Lord. I love him so much because of what he has done for me. And I want each and every one of you here to know that this morning. He's my Savior. He's my best friend. Yeah. He's the Amen. best thing that's ever happened to me. And I couldn't live life. I couldn't go on without him being ever so close to me. Bless you. you know, I don't. I don't know. I don't understand how people can go through life without Jesus Christ. I don't understand how they can do that. Because I'm not afraid to admit I can't go on without him. He is by my side every step of the way. Thank you, Lord. So today, for a few moments, I want to give you a few reasons why I love the Lord. I'll give you a few because if I were to name them all, we'd be here all day yeah. and all night. And Thank you, Lord. We might just have can't meet again. Yeah. Maybe we'll be here for quite some time. But first of all, I love the Lord for what He has done for me. Yes. For what He has done for me. Praise God. He loved me while I was yet still in sin. It's one thing to consider how the Lord would save a good person. Someone who's done good. But to think how he came to this earth to save sorry, filthy sinners. That's who he, he came to save and he, and he came to love. That right there is a different story uh -huh. altogether. But you know, he knew who I was when he made me. He saw the sinner I'd become. Yeah. But he had grace that he saved me. Thank you, Lord. Just think about a moment. Jesus Christ, he knows everything that you've done. He knows every sin you commit, every bad thing you've done, every bad word you said, every single thing. Yet he still, he came to this earth and he died for our sin. That's right. That right there Amen. is absolutely amazing Amen. to me. Yeah. He knew who we were. He knew what we do. Thank yet you. he still loves us. Romans 5, 8 says, but God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ you, died for us. Yeah. Even though he knew what I would become, even though he knew what I would do, he still loved me Thank so you. much that he came down to this earth to be born of a virgin. He left all the splendors of glory, all the good <laughs> things that were in heaven. He left them all to come to this old sinful earth to live a perfect and sinless life. He was betrayed by his friends. Thank you, Lord. He was mocked. He was spat upon. They ripped the beard from those precious, the precious face of Jesus. They beat him beyond recognition with a cat and nine tails. He was beat worse than any other man. And then they made him carry his cross of Calvary's hill. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And they hung him. On that cruel cross. 
that day. Thank you, Lord. And then he cried out, Father, forgive them. But they know not what they do. Thank you, Lord. And when they hung him there on that cross, they humiliated him. It was awful. It was terrible. Yes. I read a great illustration I want to use this morning. And the illustration goes like this. That at an inhumane prison in Germany, every Friday they made the prisoners undress for medical inspection. They were humiliated. And the women had to march before the guards. On one of those mornings, Corey Tin Boom says yet another page in the Bible left into life for me. He hung naked on the cross. Yeah. I had not known, had not thought, the paintings, the carved crucifixes showed at least a piece of cloth over him. But this I suddenly realized out of reverence, out of respect of the artist. But oh, at that time, itself on that Friday morning, there had been no reverence. Right. They didn't care. No more than I saw in the faces around us. Corey Tim Boom said, I leaned over toward Betsy, my sister, ahead of me in line, and said, Old Betsy, they took his clothes too. Thank you. And then Betsy, Corey said she heard a gasp of, of breath. And she said, Oh, Corey, and I never thanked him for it. Bless he hung in shame for our salvation. He loved us so much yes. that he died for us. I also love him because he loved me enough to convict me of my sin. The word conviction is just about gone from our vocabulary today. We don't That's right. like the word conviction. It's true. Preachers, Christians today, they, they don't want no part of, of conviction. It has been looked upon with such disgust by the, by the world today. And, and people so often come to the church today say, if it feels good, go ahead and do it. It doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever you like, it's going to be okay because, because God's a loving God and, and that right there is true. But I'm telling you, he's also a righteous God and he expects us to live a certain way and do certain, certain things. Yeah. Bless the Lord. We know people, they, they don't like conviction. But I'll tell you this, I thank the Lord for his conviction. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord Amen. for convictions. Many, many preachers feel it negative to speak or to preach about the Holy Spirit convicting sinners, so they avoid preaching or teaching on that subject far too many times. To me, conviction is not dis dis distasteful. I'll be honest with you. To be under conviction is not enjoyable. It's a very bad feeling to be under conviction. But I'm telling you, looking back on it, I'll, I'll never forget laying in a 72 MCI bus. My family, they travel and sang and and I'll never forget laying on that bus and to be under such great conviction to know that if I were to die, I'd go to hell. And the Lord, he convicted me. He convicted me. And, and I couldn't sleep at night. And I was terrified. And I was, and I was scared until one day we were in Sarasota, Florida. And the invitation was given. I couldn't find it no more. I said, Lord, I'm, I'm going. I'm ready. I'm ready to give my heart and my life to you. But I'll tell you, looking back on it now, it wasn't, I, I hated it back then. I didn't like it. It was terrible. But looking back on it now, yeah. it was the sweetest thing the Lord could ever do. Yeah. Yeah. To convict me of my sin and let me realize that I was lost and undone in need of a Savior. And I thank the Lord for that. That's right. Praise the Lord. If a person never comes to the realization that they have sinned, then they will never sense the need to turn to Christ for salvation. Right. Conviction is not what saves somebody, but it's when the Lord makes a person wish they were saved. That's right. Amen. He loved me enough to also give me the sweet Holy Spirit. Right. Thank you. This right here is great to know that the same, the same Spirit that convicts me it now comforts me. Yeah. He dwells within the heart Thank you, of the believer. He guides us, teaches, instructs us, leads us. 
He loved me enough to call me to preach. Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful for that calling that he's placed on me and my life. I know that I'm not qualified. I'm an old Florida boy. I speak fast. I talk very fast. You know, when the Lord called me to preach, I said, absolutely. There's no way. I'm not going to do it. He kept on dealing with me. I'm not going to. I stutter. When I get excited, I talk real fast. I begin to, begin to stutter. I'm not going to do it. And finally, he kept on dealing with me. I said, okay. I'll accept your call, and I'm not going to tell anybody. I think I told one person in the whole world when it was all over. <laughs> and then my pastor said, oh, I, I heard this. And he began to, began to use me. But I'm thankful that he's called me to, to preach. And I'm thankful that he, is, he has used me and my ministry and my life. I was counted up the other day, and we've seen close to 30, 30 kids give their hearts right. and their lives yeah. to Christ. Yeah. And that's something that I've done because I know who I am. I know what I've done. But it's all him, and I thank, I'm thankful that he used me, and he's allowed me to be part of that. And all that he's done for me, I'm telling you, as long as I live every breath I breathe, I'm never going to get over all that he has done for me. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I also love him for what he's doing in my life right now. Make no mistake about it this morning, I'm one blessed man. The Lord, he has been so good to me, and he has done so much for me. And I never want to be guilty of failing to give him praise, praise for God. what he has done and how much he's blessed me with. He supplies all my needs. I might not have all my wants, but everything I need, he has supplied. He hears my prayers. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He hears my prayers. He directs my life. He feeds my soul. He heals my body. He secures my future. He makes me happy. He gives me peace in the times of storms. He blesses my life. He's given me a, a wonderful family. You know, I was blessed with godly grandparents that they raised my family in church. I was blessed with godly parents that, that took me to church and they showed me what was, what was right from wrong. I'm thankful for a great family. He's given me a, a job. It might not be the best in the world, but I'm telling you, it supplies Amen. the needs and it pays my bills. I'm blessed with a wonderful wife who has been so good. She's been so great to me. She is 100% behind me every step of the way. She might not always agree with me. She might get mad sometimes at me, or all the time at me. But she's behind me. Anything that I say the Lord wants us to do, she's behind me 100%. And she is... She has been a huge blessing that the Lord has given me. She has sacrificed many hours. She has gone many, many miles with me. She, we live in Crossville. It's about an hour from here. That's where I was born on 14 years ago. And um, we got married. It'll be 11 years in April. My goodness, where has time gone? But we've gone to Smithville from Crossville. That's a good hour drive. Um, the last seven years. She never fussed. She never complained. She just got in the car and she went. And that right there is a, is a blessing. And I, and I love her for doing what the Lord has called, called us to do. Uh, amen. He's blessed her with some wonderful kids back there. They're pretty good most of them. <laughs> we go to church and I was like, man, you got the best set of kids. They're just so well behaved and they they sit there so nice, and I'm like, I'll, I'll video them when we get home, and I'll send them to you. <laughs> but I'm thankful for them. Amen. We got this morning to drive to Carthage. There was no fussing. There was no complaining. They wanted to get up and do what the Lord called Dad to do. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that. It's a, it's a blessing. He's blessed with a great city. He's blessed with a great friends. I have friends that I could call on any time of day to come, and they would be there to, to help me. And I'm thankful for what he's doing in my life right now. The last this morning, I love him for what he's going through this morning. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Thank you, Lord. 
I know the Lord's going to comfort me in time of trouble. I know whatever I go through, the Lord's going to be with me every step of the way. And one day soon, He's going to split that eastern sky. Amen. He's going to call all those who have accepted Him, all those who have believed on Him. He is going to call them up, and we're going to forever be with Him in heaven. That sure is a good reason to tell him that I love him. Yeah. Is that right, Jim? It's going to be so wonderful. I love reading about heaven. I love reading. I love studying about it. Yeah. And all the good things that are there. I'm thankful I get to see friends and family, loved ones that have gone on before. <laughs> that's going to be a blessing to me. The, the, the treasure, the Bible talks about a street of gold. And... and the things that we seek out in know. this earth, that's going to be put a walk on. Amen. The precious jewels that are there, the crystal river, the gate, the gates of pearl, the walls right. of Jasper. I'm telling you, such wonderful things. I'm thankful things that are going to be there. Yeah. There's not going to be no more COVID-19. We're not going to have to social distance, are we? Amen. There's not going to be no heart attacks, no strokes, no Praise cancer. God. No more child abuse. No, nothing like this. It's all gone. It's all done away with. Yeah. But I'm telling you this. I'm thankful that one day soon, and I believe it's soon, yes. I'll get to see my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, people, I, I like, they, they talk about what they're going to do when they see them. You know, what they're going to do. And I honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm, I'm not there yet. But if I could tell you what I believe I'm going to do, yeah. I'm just going to fall down at his feet. Yeah. Amen. And thank him for what he has done for me. Yes. Thank him for being so good. I don't know about y'all, but I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. I read a story about a, a man named a, a man named Dr. John R. Rice. He had written a story which relates well with what we're saying this morning. Back in the 60s, a wealthy man paid $20,000 to a doctor named Dr. Lorenz to come to America to operate on his crippled daughter. He accepted the offer and made his way to our country to perform this operation. The newspapers decided to cover his trip and the surgery outcome. There was another poor boy living in the same town where the doctor was coming to do the surgery. He told his mother about the story and how he wished the doctor would operate on him also. The mother, she sadly explained to him that they had no money and they couldn't. It'd be impossible for them to hire this doctor. <coughs> child said, it's okay to dream, isn't it? The mother was so touched, she decided to find where Dr. Lorenz was staying and talk with him about her son. She went to the hotel and the desk contacted the doctor and told him of his visitor. When she saw the doctor, she bowed his, at his feet and begged him to do the operation on her son. The doctor, he was so moved that he decided he would do it free of charge. The surgery was performed, and the day arrived for the little boy to attempt to walk for the first time. After walking the first step, he took the doctor by the hand, and he just kept kissing his hand while he thanked him over and over again. The doctor insisted that the boy the boy stopped and he didn't deserve such recognition over them. The boy said, as long as there is a tongue in my mouth, nobody will hear the last of what you, Thank you. did for me. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. He saved a 15-year-old boy that was lost and was dying and was going <clears throat> to a devil's hell. He's been so good to me. As long 
There's a tongue in my mouth. Thank you, Father. As long as there's breath in these lungs, but no one's ever going to hear the last of what <coughs> he has done for me. I'm never going to stop Amen. telling. I'm Amen. never going to stop telling how good he's been to me. I'm never going to stop telling what he has done to me. Thank you, Lord. We might not have the greatest possessions. We might not have the greatest home. We might not have the greatest car. But if he saves us, yeah, and he keeps us, yeah, that right there is reason enough. Thank you, to love him. Thank you, thank you, man. I want to ask you this morning. How much do you love him? How much do you truly love him? Do you love him enough to come to his house? That's a good start. How much do you love him? Do you love him enough to give him everything? Do you love him enough to give him your all? Thank you, Lord. Do you love him enough to study his word? Thank you. You love him enough to call upon him in prayer. Yes, Lord. Do you love him enough to tell others what he's done for you? Thank you. I'm telling you, if he saved you, you've received the greatest gift that could ever be given. And maybe today you're sitting here and saying, you know what? I, I've never been saved. I've never given my heart and my life to Jesus. Let me tell you, this man named Jesus... He loved you enough that he died for you. Amen. He came to this earth to Amen. save anyone that would call upon him. Thank Whosoever you. believes in him shall have everlasting life. He loved you that much. And I want to invite you today to come and meet yes. this man named Jesus. The one who loves you and he died for you. And will Thank save you. you. We can get a song of invitation ready. Thank you. Okay. Maybe today you you love the Lord, but there's things that you do that you lack. I want to invite you to come to this altar and to talk to the Lord and to thank Him for what He's done for you and to ask Him to help you along life's way. Maybe today you've never given your heart to Jesus. What a great day thank you. to be saved. For everyone will stand with me. Let's go. <laughs> thank the Lord. You need to come pray this morning. I want to invite you to come and pray. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Pray right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. God bless us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You need to pray. Come and pray. It's all for God. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. church Friday night. We have prayer. We have a wonderful prayer service here at church. 
uh, all week long, every night. Thank you that was faithful to come out and pray. I know I can thank you, but I know God blessed you. I just know that. And uh, I want to, the search not over, but you can remain standing. I, I want to mention some things that God laid on my heart. Immediately after Sunday school this morning, God laid this on my heart. People needs to get born again. Yeah. We're starting a new coronavirus has really brought our crowd down. I don't know if it should or not, but it did. It don't matter. You can debate where it should or shouldn't, but it did. The, for that thing. And we're working on a regrowth, a refresh. Uh, well, we can all have a refresh with the God's Holy Spirit. Makes us feel better every time, doesn't it? Amen. Yeah. But we're working on a, a new growth program. Man. And I've been praying about it. And I got to thinking the best way to grow and the greatest way to grow, the best way to grow, and actually, the only way you can grow in the Lord is reach the lost. Get them saved. When they get born again in your church, they're almost just automatically part of your church. And we want to work on that. And I'm going to say this. There's a lost one here this morning. If there's a child here this morning, and you're considering a child, but you know right and wrong, you've reached age accountability, and God's been dealing. If you have reached age accountability, God's been dealing with you. And you probably didn't, you probably don't know how to act or react, and that's where I was. But I'm just going to tell you it's not very hard, it's very simple. You just come to Jesus, come to the Lord, and say, Here I am, Lord. I know I'm a sinner and I need forgiveness. And He will forgive you if you're sorry for your sins. Say, God, I'm sorry. And not only will He forgive you, we talked about Sun School, He'll enter your heart, He'll enter your life. And from that time on, he'll be, as long as you keep him welcome, he'll be part of you. Yeah. Wherever you're at, he's going to be there with you. It's true. And we really need to reach our loss. Now, you might be a vulture also, <laughs> and you've been putting it off. You need to accept Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. I challenge the church this morning, well, let's go out in the highways and edges, and let's reach the loss. You know, it's good to have Christian folks, if they don't go to church and been born again, it's good to get them in church. But sometimes I think our emphasis is on getting people that's been born again and been church in the church. That's a good thing. But we need to reach the lost. The lost. <clears throat> I, do, I want to do something else this morning. Number one, I want you to be honest. How many is going to be honest with me? Raise yeah. your hand. Yeah. How many is going to be honest with the Lord? Keep your head. Amen. If you're here this morning, God's been dealing with you. I'd like you to walk down the aisle. You heard the message. Brother Andrew did, uh, told you how much he loved the Lord and what God had done for him. And what God's done for him, he'll do for you. He'll do it. And I'm going to give another, just one verse of song. You already know. I believe that. God sends conviction, and we know. I want you to have enough courage and enough love for God to walk down an aisle and give your heart to God. If you do that, you can just play softly for a while. Uh, you don't have to. We don't have to stop. Just for a little while. This is your time. I can remember when it was my time for Kendra. It was my time. And I walked down the aisle. Didn't know how to pray. You know, I, I've told the church this before. Someone tells you, they read the Lord's Prayer, or they read Romans 10, and They'll say, you do this, and God will say, you know all I've done? Didn't know anything else to do. I knew God had convicted me, and I said, God, I need to be saved. That was the term I heard. I'm sorry for my sins. I need to be saved. I, and he saved me right there. Didn't pray no pretty prayer. If you walk down the aisle, there'll be people that love you. There'll be people. If you're confused and you walk down an aisle and you don't understand it all, we'll take the Bible and show you what God says about it. If you'll do it right now, will you do it? There's a loss with you, will you do it? This will be the best day of your life. You'll remember it just like Andrew remembered, and every one of us who's ever been born again can remember the time and place. Yeah. If you'll walk down an aisle, this will be your special day. Will you do it? All up to time, will you do it? I don't want to put fear in no one. But I want to tell you the truth. Someday, we'll have our last moments of time here on earth. We better take this moment to get prepared for that moment that's coming. Will you 
doing right now? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, that you'll reach down and bless. Bless the saints and convict the sinner, Lord. Father, I ask God you'll bless the church. Bless Andrew for driving such a long way, Lord, to come and share with us this morning. Thank you for our visitors, Lord. First time they've been here, Lord. Thank you for them. And I thank you for all those that assemble to your God to make this service church. I ask God you'll leave God to reign, give everyone safety home. Bring us back tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I have announcements and then you may be ready to go. This evening, we've got a very important meeting that would like the Lord to meet at 5.30 this evening. We, were, we are, for the first time in a while, reinstating the Sunday night service on Sunday night. Won't be long, but we'll be reinstating the Wednesday night service. Amen. We have let Satan have his way long enough. Amen. Amen. It's true. Amen. Right. Amen. And, uh, we're going to, I, I, I suggest you be careful. And if you wish to wear a mask, it's not out of order. Some people that's got a weak immune system may need to. And we won't make fun of you. And if you think they will, well, I'll wear one. I don't care to be made fun of for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. But uh, remember, remember tonight's service. Tonight we're going to share. And I hope nobody don't have this attitude. I heard one say it some years ago. We were going to the prayer meeting. They said, we're going to do that. I said, we're going to pray. I said, is that all? Is that all? That, that sounds like it. Prayer is nothing. Prayer is everything. It's everything. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to pray. We've prayed all week long. And I've been blessed all week long. I'm telling you. That coronavirus shot that I got Friday would probably kill me if we hadn't been in prayer meeting. I'm telling you. It did, it did a job on it. But uh, praise God. Ain't you glad that we can pray? Amen. And speak to the Lord direct. Amen. Ain't that something? We're going to be doing that tonight. If you need prayer, you let us know. We'll pray. We did all week, didn't we? Everybody had a request. We prayed for that request. God heard the prayers this week. God heard our prayers. I believe that. All hearts clear. Anybody got anything to say? We'll dismiss. You're at liberty to go. Thank you.